Welcome to Accounting in Focus. In this video we're going to talk about the journal entries necessary to record a cash dividend. There are typically three dates that are very important when you're talking about cash dividends. The first one is the date the dividend is declared. That's called the declaration date. This is the date that the Board of Directors declares that there's going to be a cash dividend and this is also the date that a liability is generated. Once the Board of Directors declares the dividend, it has to be paid. The second date is called the date of record. This is the date where they actually pull the list of the shareholders that are going to receive the dividend. Think about a publicly traded stock. The shares are constantly being traded. So at some point, the company has to say, okay, this is the date. At the close of the stock market on, for, in this example, February 1st, we are going to pull the list of shareholders and these are the people who are going to receive the dividend. The last important date is the payment date. The payment date is the day that cash is actually sent to the shareholders that are on the list from the recording date. Okay, so there are three dates that are important. So let's go through and let's look at the journal entries that we need to record. Okay, so let's set up our journal. I'm going to have date, I'm going to have accounts, I'm going to have debit and credit. Okay, alright, so the Board of Directors declared a $50,000 cash dividend on January 15th. So this is the date it was declared. This is the declaration date. So on 115, the dividend is actually declared. Okay. So remember we said that on the declaration date, this is when the dividend is enforceable. This is when it becomes payable and we have a liability. So the counts that we're going to use, we are declaring a dividend. So my first account is dividends. Okay, so I've got dividends and then I've got dividends payable. Now I've seen some textbooks where they say retained earnings instead of dividends, but I'll tell you dividends makes more sense to me because when we're doing this we don't roll um, we don't roll anything into retained earnings until we do the closing entry at the end of the year. So I always use the dividends account. Now if your textbook tells you to use retained earnings, use retained earnings, um, but dividends is the preferred method for this. So my dividend is $50,000. Dividend is a contra equity account, which means it acts the opposite way that most of your equity accounts do. The normal balance in a contra equity account is a debit. So when we declare the $50,000, $50,000 dividend, then we've got a $50,000 debit. You also notice two dividends payable. This is a liability account. And so to increase a liability account, we're going to credit the account $50,000. Okay, so that takes care of the declaration. Now on February 1st, on 2 1, we, all we're doing is recording the list of owners. So there is no transaction here. So on the recording date, there is no entry. I actually like my students to actually put no entry because then I know that they've considered the recording date. So you may want to put, even though there's no entry required, you may want to put 2-1 no entry just so that your professor understands that no entry is required and you actually know that no entry is required rather than just skipping it. Okay, and then on 3-1, okay, 3-1 is the payment date, which means that this is the day that the dividend is actually going to be paid. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. On 3-1, what are we paying? Well, we're actually paying off this dividend payable from 115. So we're reducing the amount of the liability. So we're not paying the dividend again. 
So think about it, if you recorded dividends again, then we'd have a $100,000 dividend, 50000 of which is still payable, and then 50000 was paid in cash. So we don't want to record dividends again. Instead, we want to record a dividend payable and the reduction of that payable. So I'm going to have dividends payable, and that's going to be $50,000 and then I'm going to have a reduction in cash also of $50,000. And that's it. That's recording a cash dividend. So remember you're going to have an entry on the declaration date, no entry on the recording date, and an entry to reduce the payable and pay out cash on the payment date. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment in the comments section. Um, if you like this video, please click like, share it with your friends, and I hope this was helpful. Thanks. Have a great day.